Right, so as you know, we've been doing lots of little bits of work to this car and are still doing it. One of the things we want to do now we've got the cam belt done and um, some other little bits is uh, a service. So when we do a uh, service, we normally change the plugs, the air filter and, uh, of course, the oil. And we're going to change the oil first of all and what we like to do is run an engine flush now we always do this but especially as this car we don't know the um, history or how often the oil was changed although the service record will suggest it regularly looked after we think this last lot of oil probably been in there quite a while so it's probably more relevant to put a flush in uh, this engine than uh, some of our own engines that we regularly service and we're going to be using uh, this STP flush you can use any engine flush really that's suitable for petrol cars but this seems to be the one that's most available on uh, eBay and uh, actually is the most reasonable priced one so you pull that in once the engine is warm and then I think you let the engine run around 15 minutes on a slightly higher rev than normal and uh, that works its way around to get rid of any sort of sludge and uh, dirt that's in the engine right so while the engine's running with that um, engine flush in what we also like to do is to put in um, a engine uh, what they call stabiliser and um, you know an oil additive basically we call them and they're often quite thick and especially on a cold day it'll take ages to put that in so what we do is while the engine's running through the uh, flush and uh, then we'll put the new oil in and run it again during all that time we leave this standing on the top hose so that thick oil warms up and thins down just a little bit to make it easier to pour so what we do is say is wait that 15 minutes perhaps pick the revs up a little bit and uh, let that flush run through now right so now the uh, engine's nice and warm and the engine flush has worked its way around it's time to uh, undo the sump plug which is uh, right there and uh, drain the oil out <laughs> And that's the uh, oil coming out and draining into our drain bowl. What we do is slowly let that drain out. And uh, once it's drained out nicely, what we will do is uh, then change the oil filter. Right, so this is the uh, oil filter we're going to fit. It's uh, a nice MG Rover branded one, not the... Uh, normal one that we'd get but um we were getting some other stuff from rimmer brothers and got the service kit as part of the uh order which we normally always try and do uh, get a service kit so you get the nice oil filter and what's nice with this kit you actually get the washer for the sump plug as well so uh, now it's time to fit that well so now that oil has more or less stopped uh, dripping out just a little dribble it's time to remove the oil filter which is just up above it and uh, to remove that we use one of the material straps with uh, a ratchet and again it shouldn't be on too tight this isn't one we've changed so we don't know till we start to remove it uh, who did it last and how they might have done it but uh, normally they should remove fairly easily <sighs> which that one's now beginning to uh, remove but again, as you undo it you've got to be ready for oil coming out and having your uh, oil bowl ready and that's the uh, oil filter removed right, so we're just giving the surface of where the oil filter goes hope you can just about see that a uh, little clean up just making sure it's not too dirty right so we've got the new oil filter what we always do is just put a little bit of um, the old oil just around the seal just so that uh, isn't damaged as we're doing it up and uh, hopefully makes for a better seal
No, it's just a case of threadling it on and uh, doing it hand tight. And uh, there it is fitted uh, all on. And then the oil's more or less stopped dripping out of the um, sump plug, so we'll be able to put that back on, ready for us to put the new oil in. Alright, so we're going to put the uh, new washer that come in with the kit onto the sump plug, and uh, then we'll put it back in. So now it's time to put the new oil in. Uh, we tend to buy just uh, a standard budget oil that we can uh, normally find on eBay. That normally works for us. And then, as I said before, we then use the um, oil additive stabiliser to give the engine the protection that uh, that sort of stuff gives. So uh, we pour that in. It normally takes most of uh, this oil. Normally there's just a little bit left in the bottom. We put some cloth around there because often um, if you've got a bottle like this that doesn't have one of those little pull-out pourers, uh, you sometimes initially miss. So yeah, it's just a case of pouring that in, then we'll let it settle for a while. Right, so that's all the uh, oil that we're going to put in for now. Uh, we've got about that much left in our bottle and um, we've obviously allowed enough so that when we put our um, engine oil additive in, it's not going to almost give us too much oil in there but if there's still not enough we've got some oil there to uh, flush that through afterwards and get it up to completely the right level what we do is give it a little short run that will keep this bottle warm as i said before we keep that warm on the engine get the new oil working around before we put our um, engine additive oil in so now we're going to start it up after putting the new oil in. All we're looking for is that the oil pressure light goes out. Um, it may stay on a little bit longer than normal, but it shouldn't be much more. Yeah, and the oil light's gone out there. So um, we'll let it run over for a little bit, or we'll let it um, tick over for a little bit to get that oil going down. If you see any warning messages out there, we've got some plugs disconnected to the brakes because we've got those um, wheel liners out at the moment due to the other work we're doing. So uh, that's not a, a problem, or it's a problem we know about because those plugs are disconnected. And as we started it, just a quick little check, check the sump plug and uh, the new oil filter aren't leaking at all. And uh, now they're looking pretty good. So yeah, it's always worth just checking those two things. So now we're just putting the um, engine oil additive in, the stabiliser. Once all that's gone in, it does come out quite slowly, so you've just got a case of just leaving it there till it all comes out of the bottle. We then run it and get that um, working round. Right, so that's the engine oil uh, all in and the additive in as well. So we're just going to let that work around the engine while it's um, running. Uh, all we've got to do now is the um, spark plugs and the uh, oil filter. Now, um, I've actually, or we've actually done those um, as part of some of the other jobs we did. So what I will do is add that into this section so you see the full service, although they're actually were done as part of other jobs, but it'll let you see the full service. So we'll uh, show those clips now. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this plastic casing and then go on to remove the rocker cover, which you wouldn't normally need to do. But we're going to do that because we always paint where this is black. We paint this uh, red normally and uh, it gives us a good chance to have a look around it as well. Right, so we've removed the uh, coils and the wiring and that sensor. If you would like to see uh, more detail in removing this rocker cover, we have got a video on us purely doing that and painting it all up.
and that's the spark plugs removed and uh, they're looking not too bad uh, colour either so um, as you can see there they're all looking uh, more or less like that but they uh, certainly need change and what we've done we've had a little look at the um, cam shafts and uh, we've put this back this is just acting as a little bit of protection over them and while we're painting the um, the cover here we're uh, put an old one on top that we've got spare as well just so no dampness or dirt can get inside so that's the uh, rocker head cover now painted in the red as well right so we're now ready to put the spark plug leads in uh, we've got to put the little sensor in as well that you can just see by the oil filler cap um, before we put the spark plugs in though we're just going to check the gaps uh, often they're normally roughly right but uh, if not then you uh, might have to re-gap them so that's what we're just doing at the moment <sighs> Then we thread them in by hand before we then tighten them up. We're going to do all four of those now. So what we also sometimes do, just to make sure there's no dirt settled, especially being we've had this uh, off for a while, is just to give it a little blowout with the air gun, so that if any dirt's in it, it will blow straight back out. And then we just check down there as well, then we put the next plug in. So we're going to get on with putting those uh, plugs in. We're there just giving it a little bit of uh, a wire brush as well, just to... Uh... And what we also do sometimes, if it's looking a little bit dirty, is in the coils and the spark plug leads, we put a teeny little bit of contact cleaner uh, in there just to get rid of any sort of corrosion that might have built up. And we also put it in the uh, ends of the plugs, both of them go into the coils as well, just to uh, stop any future corrosion, but to clean anything out that is there. Because these often do get quite grubby and dirty, and they change time after time with uh, new spark plugs, but these never really get changed, so uh, it's always worth checking they're clean. Right, so we're now putting the coils back in. It's always worth remembering to plug this end coil in, otherwise you won't get the plug in with the plastic cowl in there. We're going to do that and put the lid back on. I'm not going into too much detail into this, as there is actually a video we did changing the coils. So the last job is uh, to put the plastic cover on over the coils and the spark plug uh, leads. Uh, to remove that is the two screws at the top and then there's these little hinges there that you kind of just hook out and um, then what we've done is just pulled this away from that uh, intake so when you remove it away uh, that can come right out the way and we can just um, sit it over here nice and clear out the way remove the old air filter which we'll change with a new one as part of doing this job and then we'll blow it through and get any of the dirt out and that right so we're putting the new air filter in now um it's actually an mg Rover one from Rimmer Brothers, which normally we wouldn't get, but we wanted to make up um, an order and they do a service kit. Uh, quite a nice air filter, although not that much different to any other in a lot of looks, but um, we thought we'd um, use that service kit and we're doing that amongst the other work. All we've got to do now is uh, put back on the top of the air cleaner to seal that up. Right, so that's the service finished. Hopefully, as always, it's been of use. I just thought we'd cover a service as we've not done one on one of our 75s 
on uh, video as always don't forget to look at all our um, links um, subscribe and like and of course um, look for the next video